everybody, welcome to the Paranormal Connection. I'm your host, Donna Wilberg. Well, we are beginning our part two in the series with Carolyn um, McGraw. She's an intuitive, empathic healer. Uh, she's a life coach. She, she does all these wonderful things and she puts them together in such a fabulous package. You're not gonna be able to resist. But tonight <laughs> we are talking about healing from the other side. So this is something that, that she does that, it, to me, it, it just sounds so unique and, and fresh, and I'm, I'm happy to have her on the show sharing this with us today. So welcome. Thank you, Donna. Welcome back. Okay, so let's start out with a little bit of your background. Okay. We'll cover that uh, in case you know people didn't get to see right. uh, part one. So I'm a healing coach and uh -huh. clinical hypnotherapist, and um, my background is in education. And I've been a teacher and a reading specialist and um, gone to my passion of uh, healing. And um, I work with people with uh, addictions and relationship issues and um, pain, physical, mental, emotional pain, um, anxiety, depression. Um, work specialized with children and teenagers. And um, I've learned many, many modalities and I've put them together in a unique um, little program that I do. And the main ones that I use is um, alchemical hypnotherapy and connecting to your inner, inner guide, your inner wisdom. And um, energy medicine is boosting your immune system and stress release on your cellu cellular level using a number of frequencies. And then I do emotional release therapy. It's based on radionics, using muscle testing to balance your body, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual levels, pulling out toxins, heavy metals, and balancing your organs. There you go. That's super, super. Well, let's talk about how you got into furthering this healing to the other side. All right. Well, um, there are two worlds, okay. the seen world and the unseen world. And there's light and there's dark and then there's the in-between. And since I was a little girl, I've had experiences and I've noticed that people, this runs in family. This is a gift to be able to see spiritual things. And often it runs in families. And um, so my mother would share with me some experiences that she had so to me it was okay to talk about it and mm -hmm. it was kind of normal and um, so I, I had that um, feeling and that it was okay to share and what I was seeing and feeling so um, my first experience was when I was about six years old and I was at church and I looked up at the choir and the seats were filled and they were all dressed in white robes. And I was like, this must be a very special choir today because even their hair color matches their robes. And I thought that's going to be a fantastic musical number. And I was on the edge of my seat, excited and waiting. And um, they said the last amen. And there was no song from this wonderful choir I was expecting. And so I turned to my mother and I said, mom, how come the choir didn't sing? And she said, honey, there is no choir today. Oh, wow. And I said, yes, there is. I see them. <laughs> and I don't know if it registered that point that those were angels I was seeing, visiting. And um, I wonder why else is no, no one else has seen this? Mm -hmm. So um, another experience I had when I was about seven, I was riding my bike down a hill to school and I was going very fast and I took my hands off the handlebars and I hit a rock and I flew off my bike and hit the asphalt straight on my head. Mm. And I was very shocked to feel nothing and that I realized my head should be cracked open. I should be bleeding. I should be going in the ambulance to the hospital is the impact that I hit. But it felt as if a pillow had been placed there and my head had bounced off like a trampoline. And I knew, you know, it came to my mind, an angel saved me. An angel put a pillow there and all I had was a little scratch on my knee. And at seven, I knew that I, there was divine intervention. And the angels come to protect us, guide us, inspire us, heal us. They, they, everyone has guardian angels. Mm -hmm. And um, so in the work that I do, the angels come. I invite the angels in, my angels, my clients' angels. 
um, to be a part of the work. Wow, that's incredible. So as you're working with people, um, and, and I know a lot of emotional stress comes from losing our loved ones and, you know, being left with either guilt or, or sadness. And how do you, how do you do that? How do you, um, set that up for a client to, um, heal in that, that respect? Okay. Well, the, the, that's the power of intention. So, um, before I work, I have the intention of the highest healing and the angels of light to come and attend and mm -hmm. invite guides. And often our guides and angels can be our ancestors. Mm -hmm. Many times they want, they want to see us happy and doing well. And um, so often I will feel them and my client will feel them. We'll get an image and a feeling of them and I'll describe, oh, and they are like this. And they say, yeah, that's exactly how they were. I just, I feel them. Mm -hmm. um, so in the work, the emotional release therapy, we're able to um, pinpoint um, an issue may come up and it may not be their own. It may be a generational. So that will come up in the muscle testing. This is a generational. And then I can ask, how many generations back does this go? Three, four, 10. And what side, mother's side, father's side? And sometimes, then sometimes I'll know what the emotion is um, that that ancestor had that passed down into the DNA and that you're dealing with and it isn't even your own but it hasn't been cleared it hasn't been dealt with so it's going to pass keep passing down to future generations so um, with the energy work we pinpoint that and soon as we recognize it then the energy our intention to pull to pull re release and and then um, address the ancestors of um, if anyone has had this issue and they would like the healing, we extend this healing to you. And then we extend it to future generations. So children, brothers and sisters, it extends out both ways. Mm -hmm. And um, then that issue, and it comes down to forgiveness. Gratitude, forgiveness, and love is part of the, the energy that is the healing. And mm -hmm. if they didn't do it on this earth, they are still dealing with it. Right. And the next life. Um, so take, you got to take care of your business here and, and, um, forgive. And, um, so with the generational healing, it's, it's just fascinating to see, um, that many times the grandparents show up and, and I'm, and they need healing and then they help their healing. So the client. what kind of healing do they need that that they have to rely on somebody from this world to to deal with that i thought i thought i thought once we go to the other side you know everything's fabulous you know Not we are quite back to our <laughs> energy bodies and we are just <laughs> light beings and we are okay so there's we, trails of what you left your unfinished business okay um say for example addictions if you had an addiction here you still have the craving, even though you don't have your body, you're still, you can still have the residue of the craving of that addiction, which holds you back from progressing on into your next life. Okay. Um, so the grandparents come and they need healing and then they, they help with the healing. And, um, it just, it brings tears to my eyes and to feel like I'm like, um, like I feel like a soul whisperer, you know, mm -hmm. we're working in both worlds and, um, you know, that they bring gratitude and love and I can feel their love for that, that person that has come. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's just, it's just incredible to see that. And here's an example. Um, a man was dealing with depression all his life and he had no explanation for the depression. Um, he hadn't had any trauma. There was nothing that he could pinpoint, but he had this overwhelming sadness and depressing depression all his life. So he um, went for generational healing and they were able to determine that um, his great, great grandmother um, had lost a child and the child had um, fallen into the river and drowned. And she could not forgive herself. She blamed herself. She felt the guilt and she had a cloud of darkness 
and depression the rest of her life. Mm -hmm. Well, that carried down to then her daughter and her and granddaughter and great granddaughter. So that this man was dealing with this depression that wasn't even his own. So he was glad to find out where this came from, what this is, and then help grandma let go. Help great great grandma release that, forgive herself, mm -hmm. let it go. And then that carried down to each person that had that in them so that his depression then was gone and he ha didn't have any more depression the rest of his, in his life. That's amazing. That's amazing. But it, you know what, it, it, it makes so much sense because, you know, we don't really have the opportunity, most of us don't have the opportunity to work through that healing, you know, before we say goodbye, you know, on, on both parties, you know. So um, what's, your, what's your view on dementia? Dementia? Yeah. <laughs> not dealing with childhood stuff. And so it comes back up as childlike and trying to reconnect to that um, part that you close down. And, um, and, and it, there's trapped emotions. Mm -hmm. And that's what causes disease, is these trapped emotions, um, lowers our immune system, and then illness and disease can come in if we're not dealing with things as they come and forgiving and letting go. Wow. So imagine that going, you know, from generation to generation. How prevalent is that when you're doing a healing? That, that you know, people are ill for something that happened. It's pretty common. Is it? Wow. Yes, it comes up on and different issues. Uh -huh. um, whatever they're coming to me, they want to heal uh, an illness or a habit or a belief or change. Um, sometimes, you know, it will come up on that um, generational, and then we need to, we determine. Um, also, it can be um, influences of adversarial influences, entities. Um, attach and have that little voice in there. You're no good. You can't do it. That is not your voice. That is not you. That is adversarial dark entities influencing your thoughts. And that we also do that in that um, the emotional release therapy also that will come up if there is that present. And then we help them go to the light. Wow. So do you, are you able to determine that by the test, the yes, stencil the testing? Muscle testing. Muscle testing. Mm -hmm. Wow. And was it like to have another entity that... Well, we don't give is, them any power and uh, we don't have any fear. We just say, okay, you need to go. We command you to go into the light and leave now and um, just kind of neutral. You know, not, it's not a big deal. We don't put a lot of energy yeah. in. It's just um, this, this is part of... This is part of what happens. And um, an example was a man was driving home one day and he started having that little voice, you're no good, you're, no one appreciates you at work, no one appreciates you at home, um, no one cares about you. And, and then the thoughts kept going and going and finally the thought came, you should just kill yourself. Mm. And this is how you should do it. And so this voice was talking to him and then there was um, some construction in the road and he had to slow down and, and he kind of shook himself like, what uh, is that? You know, what is that? that I don't want to kill myself. And he realized that there was another voice talking to him and it wasn't his own. And he was able to get himself out of that, realizing how powerful it can be to um, drag you down and keep you from your potential and your life's purpose. Wow. Now I've heard, I've, I've heard people talk about that and, and I don't know exactly what the terminology is is for that, the attachments. Um, where are they coming from and, and how do you know, how do you know what you're dealing with? Well, many times they can be earthbound um, mm -hmm. spirits okay. that um, un, unfinished business, unresolved issues and they're, or they they can't let go or they can't leave, you know, something has kept them from moving on. And so that is one um, part. And then the other part is just the evil, the evil part that um, 
is uh, just very dark uh -huh. and wants to suppress us and depress us and keep us from being who we really are. And so with the, the work, we are able to determine what, what exactly it is, how many there are, mm -hmm. the level and degree. So um, it's just fascinating to see that, that we can get that kind of detail to know. What kind of, uh, is there a term for that kind of healing? Um, extraction. Extraction, mm -hmm. okay. Now was there a special kind of training that you went through for that? Yes, okay. yes what I was, did. What is that so that was an emotional release therapy okay. and the energy connection that I learned. And um, it's just commanding, commanding you, the intention, you know, finding where it is. It can be attached to a different part of the body, an organ. It could be attached to an illness. So we find out what is it attached to, an addiction. Mm -hmm. What is it attached to? And then just command it to, to go. Oh, dang. So yeah, lots of protection. Yeah. Prayer, protection. And, um, you know, and then they don't stay in my space. <laughs> There's a shield around my space and around me. So I haven't had any, any problems at all. Wow. How does it take longer for some for that kind of healing than it would for from just a straight emotional healing? Um it can. It can. Mm -hmm. Um depending on what what it is, it it, it can you go into t you know, this issue leads to this issue, leads to this belief, to this emotion, to this allergy, to this addiction. So it, it's like this, um, you know, branches on a tree and it can mm -hmm. just keep spreading out until you can get, what we try to get to is the very core. What is, what has caused this? Where has it come from? And um, let it go. Wow. So during the break, we were talking a little bit about how, uh, how you kind of set up your, your session and you said that the spirits just sort of show up on their oh, own. Oh yes. So yes. why don't you talk okay. a little bit yes. about that, Carolyn? So um, I, my intention is to invite um, the angels of light to come in and be uh -huh. part of the healing. They love the energy. They that's how they work on healing energy. And in fact, one um, example of that's how I came to know this is the first time I had ever had energy work on me, and the practitioner left the room. I knew, I felt like someone else had come into the room and was coming near my head and was like adjusting my neck and I thought what they came back and I and I was like oh, somebody else is here and there was more work to be done and um, my angels want to help me and heal me and this is phenomenal and I love this to be able to connect with them through the angels so uh -huh. um, so I, I invite them in and um, the guides of the my client that I'm working with um, and so they, I might be getting impressions from them or um, just tuning in to maybe a message that they have that, for the client. And so when we get to the generational um, aspect, um, many times I'll feel um, grandparents come and I can just feel this overwhelming love that they have for their relative that's doing mm -hmm. this work and um, that they want to help. They want us to be happy. They, they want to be a part of our lives still, even though they're on the other side and um, there's still a connection. Um, so um, one um, uh, client I was working on, um, she was able to um, see, see the, the relatives and um, she started saying um, names and um, of relatives that she didn't know and she felt them there with her and I says you just this is a gift this is a spiritual gift that you're able to see this and this mm -hmm. is a wonderful beautiful thing and um, and you know so I feel like teaching children and people how to open up their their eyes their third eye and see and feel as children are very easily able to do this. Mm -hmm. So you teach the healing classes and you also teach how to open up the, the door. Spiritual gifts, how okay. to tune in and find out what your spiritual gifts are. Okay. As well as the manifesting um, workshops. And um, I do a different workshop each month, uh, hypnotherapy and different healing modalities and how to de-stress and um, how to feel happier and healthier in your life. Oh, that's terrific. 
It's a lot of work. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> I love it. It's my passion. That's, that's so, neat. You, the most exciting part, my reward, is after a session, I can see after they have let go of the emotional baggage, there the light shines in the client's eyes, and they feel more their true self, mm -hmm. and they just light is just beaming out, and that's just such a beautiful thing to be able to witness of all this stuff that we carry around, and just this, these techniques can help you let it go, release it, so you can find joy yeah. and happiness in what we're supposed to be doing in our life. It's like a good slough, huh? Just get all those... Yes, yes. a detox. A detox, <laughs> detox. Well, why don't you give everybody your information, how they can contact you, and uh, talk a little okay. bit about that. So I, my website is healingcoach.org, and um, I have an office in Folsom, and um, a healing coach on uh, the Facebook, and um, I'm doing workshops every third Thursday of the month at the Classy Hippie Cafe in Midtown. And um, so information is on there about um, different topics that I'll be doing. And the one coming up is January 22nd. And that's on magical, marvelous miracles, manifesting skills, and finding out what's in the way of you getting your heart's desire. Super. And you're also available for? Yes, um, sessions uh -huh. in person, um, by phone. And um, yeah, it's a series of three to four sessions working with a different modality. And then I have a healing program, is six sessions where you can, I can teach you all the tools and work with you, um, coaching you and helping you transform, transform your life. Great, that sounds fabulous. <laughs> well, let's talk a little bit about the Paranormal Connection. The Paranormal Connection airs the first and third Thursday at 9.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Our companion show, Story Connection, airs the second and fourth Thursdays of each month. Each episode repeats the following Friday at 1.30 p.m. and Saturday at 5.30 a.m. Watch these programs online at the same airtimes by going to accesssacramento.org and clicking Watch 17. In the Sacramento region, you can see us on Comcast Channel 17 and on AT&T Channel 99. You can find previously aired shows on the Paranormal Connection YouTube channel. For information on upcoming shows and previous Paranormal Connection guests, go to paranormalconnectiontv.blogspot.com. You can contact us at paranormalconnectiontv at gmail.com. And don't forget, find us on Facebook. Become a friend and become a fan. Carolyn, time, we're always running out of time, especially when things are so interesting. What would you like everybody out there to take away from your sessions? Um, that there is lots of support and help um, on the other side for us. And we can tune into that and we can feel their love and feel that family generational connection to our ancestors and that they want to help us and um, that um, through the different modalities that I do, you can really tune in and feel, feel them and um, learn about your own gifts and talents in, in the spiritual realm. That's wonderful. Well, I really appreciate you coming and imparting <laughs> all this information. And if everybody's head is exploding out there, no worries. Just look uh, Carolyn up on uh, Facebook and on HealingCoach.org. And HealingCoach.org. And, and, you know, just reconnect and, and get a taste of, of what it is that you'd like to work on and give her a call. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I think that'd be fabulous. There's so many things that my head's buzzing of, of you know, things <laughs> Yes, you to want to come at. see me, don't you? I do. You can, <laughs> she's so intuitive. Anyway, um, thank you for, for coming on and... Uh, telling us all about what you do. And again, I think that's fantastic that there's people like you out there that are so passionate about this because we all have the tools. We just don't know it. And um, that's right. So yeah. I just remind you yes. how to do it and that you can do it. Yeah, I, I think that's wonderful. So with that, we're going to say good night. We're going to um, Thank our wonderful, fabulous crew that came out tonight to volunteer. You guys are the best ever. 
and uh, we love you. So everybody out there who's listening tonight, I hope that you found this beneficial and um, don't forget to give Carolyn a, a, a look and uh, maybe take one of her workshops. It'd be very helpful. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Good night. Thank you.